So when we uh, first originally you're like Kevin C, right? Kevin C. It's not Kevin C two. You're Kevin C one, and then it's Kevin C two. Oh crap! It's it. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we're live. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So when we first read the product, uh, the project description, we were like, okay, we have to do something with audio. We have to do something with video, and we want to do something with uh, player interactivity. So we're like, how can we interact it, or how can we combine all these elements together so it isn't like gimmicky? We're like, well, we can make a music-based game. And we're like, well, what kind of music-based games are there? Guitar Hero. So, we present FPGA Hero. Yay! Oh, oh, I just said it. <laughs> okay. um, so, first things first. Can you take this move a little bit to the back? Yeah. Uh, so, you can enter the username. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, do you want to just start with the audio? <laughs> sure. Um, so inside of our top level FPGA hero module, we have this module called Music Min, which takes care of all the audio stuff. Um, we implemented harmonics, dynamics, chords, multiple voices, and multiple voices. Um, so, I mean, the, the Music Man has a couple voice boxes, which each um, can play its own harmonic signature, which should sound like instruments, but only at certain um, octaves. Um, Where they should be at in real life, be playing, and they sound fine. Um, and then within each voice box, there are four enhanced note players, each of which um, plays a note, and so that's how we implement our chords. There are up to four notes per chord. And within that, right, within the note player, we implement the harmonics. And so when we were including harmonics, we thought, well, we have 2,083 cycles between samples. So why create more instances of the module if we can just do it in time? So we actually compute computer harmonics sequentially and then have like a running sum and output with that. Um, so this allows up to like 64 harmonics. Or um, more, really. Yeah, we only have 64. We, you can't use them because at a certain point the sign ROM isn't actually accurate enough yeah. to depict higher frequencies. So that's why higher notes don't sound realistic. Um, for dynamics, we have a dynamic decay ROM which basically, I guess, would um, trace out the envelope of the, of the harmonic signature of the note. Um, yeah, and it also, and it also the scales the, the overall amplitude. So the decay is actually uh, proportional instead of the frequency of the note, the duration of the note. So it pretty much like tracks its way through the ROM and just like uh, it just sort of scales the whole uh, note so that it like has an expert, like a attack and then a decay. So you can actually change the envelope by just like typing in a new ROM instead of like doing all this crazy math. Um. Uh, and then for visuals, so our wave display isn't much different than our lab, it wasn't our sort of like goal of the project. Um, much there because we have, have to have it. Have it. <laughs> um, but there's two different displays, there's the background noise and then the player noise. So when you're playing you can see what waveform you're generating and if you miss a note it's not going to show up. Uh, those are really bad. And then we have the your great or your awful meter. Um, so there's every time you hit a note or miss a note, it steps either positively or negatively, um, depending. And it just, uh, but it never reaches the top because you can never be perfect. And then also uh, we have our bar at the bottom, so you're able to see what. Yeah, what notes you're holding down. Um, so we're sending that is able to interpret. The white bar at the top is if you got the note. So if you got the note, it uh, stays there for uh, the flashes right. A bit, yeah. Flashes a little bit for like the right strum. Hey, let's um, play first. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 playing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So um, this is our play button. Oh yeah, we did a PS2 interface that caused a lot of grief, and then I just rewrote it, and it was. Disgustingly simple on <laughs> um, And this is our next button. So, okay. let's.
so we spent all of our time writing this thing, and then the last day we threw in two songs. Yeah, our songs are not the best. That's probably like one thing that I would change is like be able to read music before starting to start. Like a crash course. Yeah, a crash course for how to read music. Wow. That's so <laughs> anyway. Wait, so if you just throw man like that, you can play. Okay. So should we tell them our dirty little secret? Yeah. Okay. So we were actually playing in demo mode, so it's like god mode, where you get all the notes right. No. There's a little switch. <laughs> so we, we just, because the thing is, if you play the wrong note, it actually won't, it, it won't output the player's sound, it will only output the background. So we wanted to like show the whole song so you can hear that it actually plays before we actually like try to do it. And so um, we actually have different difficulties. Yeah. So I'll just talk about the game logic. Um, okay. So there's the music man, right? And then, uh, so what we do for the game is, um, we actually track, there's a game master module that actually tracks the music man's progress throughout the song round. And it can actually independently read the song round. So what it'll do is like, it'll uh, scan, it'll like, it, there's bottom of the, what, 120 beats yeah. from here to the top of the screen. So what we did was we like, the song round is, or the music player is always reading from this part. So what we do is we scan the end of the song round for any notes. And if, when we find the notes, we like, uh, we convert them into game notes, so like actual fingerings, and then we push it onto this uh, a game note ramp, which acts as a FIFO, first in, first out, um, except it's like a little bit enhanced. So initially when we did that, we were just like having these massive shifting registers, but that was a terrible idea, so what we did was we um, we did it with uh, pointer, lo pointer logic, um, so that we, we could like, we would shift the pointers to the data instead of actually moving the data, which turned out a lot better. Um, so um, and then from the bottom of the music or the game note ramp, ram, we have a game note checker that takes the input of the controller and like uh, it actually what it does is it sees um, it actually depending on the difficulty setting it'll see if you're playing the note a little bit too ahead of, ahead of time or a little bit too late and if it's within the constraints then it'll uh, send a signal to the sound assembler which takes the game the background. Uh, sample and the player sample and combines them if the right note is played and just plays this uh, background if it's not. And then so then the display actually reads from that game note ram. So it's just like showing the, display, the game note ram as it's shifting. And that grace period in which you can actually hit the right note is adjustable anywhere from plus or minus six beats to plus or minus zero beats. <laughs> so if you're adventurous you can play it, try to get it in one forty eighth of a second. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so our this is actually this feature is actually meant to cover up a feature. Um, the way we displayed our game notes that'd be like some weird like popping artifacts at the top. So we just put the player name at the top and <laughs> enter it in with the keyboard. Um, and the, the logo we actually so we drew it up in paint and then we a little map lab script to like pull out the oh, extra Photoshop. Photoshop. It's like the first one was in paint. Yeah. Just new ones. <laughs> yeah. Now should we try the usability of your game and yes, ask so one of some of your friends who work? I'm not gonna work. <laughs> 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 you can do it. So anyone want to try? <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> Alright. So, yeah, David. Um, <laughs> did you already <laughs> try before, David? No, I haven't. Wait. So okay. So the note, the controls are. Uh, so spacebar is to strum. Uh, alt is to play. Next song. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can just, um, just push the buttons and you'll see. So you can push the buttons and see which one's going to work. One, two, three, one, two, three, enter. One, two, three, or four. And the plus one. They'll light up for the last one. Okay. Yeah. So and if your alt is play. Alt is play and plus is run. Uh, space is run. Space is run. And you want to hit it when the note hits it's the box. In, when it's in this oh, box, not under the. So under the box. Yeah, in the box. <laughs> oh, oh my god. Uh, is it wait till below the box? Once, the, once it's in the box. Oh, okay. Below the strong box.
so this Claire, song Claire, Claire, Claire. Can anyone tell what this song is supposed to be? Nah, I haven't gotten enough sleep to do that